I think legalization will continue to, to spread around the country. And I think at a certain point, there will be a very strong liberal backlash um, because the, the pot market that is emerging uh, is going to get bigger and more professionalized. And it's only a matter of, of time before the advocates for legalization realize that, hey, we didn't used to like the guy who's on the cover of Fortune magazine or Forbes. And it's kind of cool now that that's a marijuana guy. You know, actual examples, Fortune and Forbes. But we weren't really about big business before. And we never really liked genetically modified anything. If it was a mango, we'd fight it. And that, it's all genetically modified in Colorado. It's hard to find what they call a land race strain of marijuana, something that grew naturally and has not been modified by man. The, the, there's a, a second part of legalization that doesn't yet concern a lot of people, but concerns me, and I think will eventually become a liberal issue, and that, that is the reach of the emerging marijuana industry. So if you unleash this tremendous market worth billions, which I think is true, you create entities, organizations, who have a very strong incentive to create as much marijuana use as possible, and not only that, but to create as much problematic marijuana use as possible. If we really mean to sell marijuana like alcohol, then we mean to create a market where most of the revenue comes from people who have a problem. That is the business model of alcohol. 80% of the revenues comes from a tiny sliver of the users. It's not the guy who has a drink after work. It's the guy who has six, misses his kid's bedtime, his marriage is in shambles. That's the kind of guy who supports the industry. There's going to be more and more money in, in mainstream marijuana in big marijuana behind optimizing the experience uh, and delivering it in a way that just totally bypasses the, the, the senses, uh, like you see in, in food. We've become more sensitive, and liberals in particular have become more sensitive today to what Kraft Food does and what Nestle does and what Coca-Cola does to corner us into a set of choices that involve processed, highly profitable food, and that when we try that food, it just electrifies us. It just blows us away. The food that these companies are producing today, I mean, it, it is meant to just overwhelm the senses, right? They talk about the bliss point. I think there's every reason to believe that the science of processed food delivery will overlap in the future with the science of marijuana. It's already in edibles. And that's, that's troubling. I mean, that, that's creating a potential monster. The joke in the 1970s when my father was, was big in the marijuana world was, well, we don't really want them to legalize it because if they legalize it, it won't be fun and it won't work anymore. There was some believed connection between the illegality uh, and the thrill of doing wrong and sneaking and breaking the, the government's rules. That was kind of the high, right? It wasn't, it wasn't only the THC. It was the, the idea that we're flicking off Uncle Sam, who doesn't know. And when that's gone, well, you have to create something else to make it work. And that something else is a, is a lot of... THC and, uh, and more use than we currently see and potentially a problem, so uh, it's a concern.